Good evening, everybody. I'm Peter Jennings at ABC News headquarters. In the words of a flight director at NASA, it has been a bad day. Seven astronauts have died, their families shattered. The space program has been dealt a terrible blow. The larger family of men and women in space exploration devastated. And the country has been reminded how dangerous it is and that for all of America's technological genius, it doesn't always work. This morning, just before 8 o'clock Texas time, the Space Shuttle Columbia was just about to finish a picture-perfect 16-day scientific mission. The astronauts' families were by the runway in Florida, poised for a great reunion. Instead, this was the picture that we all saw. Columbia was at 200,000 feet, going 12,500 miles an hour when it suddenly broke up under stress that we still do not understand. 16 minutes from home. We begin our field reporting with ABC's Ned Potter. Ignition and liftoff of Space Shuttle Columbia with Columbia was on a science mission. Seven astronauts, 16 days, 70 experiments. A more courageous group of people you could not have hoped to know. This morning, the crew finished packing up for re-entry. Landing planned for 9.16 this morning Eastern time on the runway at Florida's Kennedy Space Center. At 8.15 a.m., they fired their engines to begin their return from orbit. This is Mission Control Houston. Shuttle landings are normally quiet, but at 8.53 a.m., Mission Control saw some odd temperature readings here along the left wing. A few minutes later, there were more oddities, apparently having to do with the landing gear on the left side. At 8.59 a.m., the shuttle came over Texas, still 39 miles high and moving at 12,000 miles an hour. Mission Control had its last contact with the crew. In Columbia, Houston, we see your tire pressure messages, and we did not copy your last. There was nothing more. People on the ground saw the streak of the shuttle breaking up. And then suddenly things started raining down out of the sky. And they were just, it was sounds like a boomerang whizzing through the air. At 9.16 a.m., the scheduled landing time came and went. At 9.29 a.m., NASA officially declared an emergency and impounded all data for the investigations that will follow. At 2 p.m., the president addressed the nation. These men and women assumed great risk in the service to all humanity. In an age when space flight has come to seem almost routine. What went wrong? Some engineers wonder if the trouble really began at liftoff, when some insulation came off the shuttle's big orange fuel tank and apparently struck the orbiter's wing. The technical community got together and across the country looked at it and, and judged that to be acceptable. NASA quickly said there was no sign of terrorism. At this time, we have no indication that the mishap was caused by anything or anyone on the ground. This satellite radar image shows parts of North Texas where most of the debris may have crashed to Earth. But people as far west as California and Utah thought they also saw debris as the ship streaked overhead. Engineers say anything at this point is speculation. It seemed there was a sequence of events, something that started with one event leading to another and another. There is no saying what will come of the investigation. The chief flight director said, when we have a bad day, we find the problem and go fix it. Ned Potter, ABC News, New York. <laughs>